Okay, we are back. We are back. It's been um, probably like a year. So, um, hello. Hi. Hope everyone's doing all right. Haven't checked up on y'all in a while. I've been restricted to uh, Instagram and Twitter, if anybody follows that. But uh, regardless, it's been a uh, it's been an invent an eventful an eventful year for me, and I hope it's been eventful for all of you too in a very good way. Hopefully, um, I'm in a new place. It's much bigger than the last place. Of course, in the last place there were only two of us. Now there's a few more. Uh, I have more space than I had before, but uh, there's also some caveats. I no longer have my workspace in my bedroom uh, because there's not room in the bedroom. My workspace is now out in the dining area or what would be the dining room, which means that a lot of the time I don't really have the space or the availability to record audio, which uh, not that that's the sole reason I haven't made anything. I just haven't been feeling inspired, but uh, that's one of the reasons I would say. So I finally managed to sneak off to my room, lock myself away, tell everybody to shut up for a little while. I didn't say that. I would never tell them to shut up. And uh, now I'm recording a video for you at long last. Hope everyone's been doing good. It's been a, uh, it's been too long, in my opinion. These things are uh, very therapeutic for me, these little sit-down sessions that we have. And, uh, while, while I haven't really been showing it to you on the YouTube side because it takes a lot more work to edit and all that, I've still been drawing, you know? I've still been getting the therapy out of just creating things on their own. But, um, I really missed just being able to talk like this because I can kind of get what's on, off, on my mind at the moment out. You know what I mean? And, uh, I guess what's on my mind lately has been, uh, Lego, weirdly enough. I have not bought a Lego set in a long, long time. I mean, like, I haven't even bought, like, the Lego Sonic set that they made, and that's, like, like blasphemy, you know what I mean? Absolute anarchy. But, for some reason, they've just been on my mind lately. I've been, uh, been getting back into watching, uh, Lego Stop Motions which I, I don't think I've mentioned them on the channel, but Lego Stop Motions were probably the biggest or one of the biggest inspirations for making videos in the first place. Um, I can remember a friend of mine introducing us to uh, Swanky Films, I think his name was, who made like the Lego Jonas Brothers and stuff like that. And of course, the Forest Fire 101 Lego Batman videos and stuff. And uh, it kind of just opened this whole interesting little pathway from where I was. Because um, I guess for context, uh, at the time, I was probably like 7 or 8. And I mean, I'd played with Lego for a long time, you know. I got a box, like a little, I think it was a tissue box or something, like a little plastic tub with Legos that belonged to my dad and my mom uh, when they were kids. I guess they had just combined them and given them to us at some point. And I had uh, played with those for a long time and got more sets over time. I mean, found out that there were like Lego Star Wars sets and that just blew me away, you know? It, it became even more of an obsession when we found this friend group um, there's this family, which I'm not gonna say their last name, I guess I shouldn't. They had like nine or ten kids, right? And all of these kids were into Lego and Star Wars and Harry Potter and stuff like that. And whenever we'd go over, it was like it was like being set loose in a candy shop, you know? They had all these crazy sets. They they'd always been getting big, like the, you know, like, hundred dollar, like, Star Destroyer sets and stuff. And, uh, they had, like, Hogwarts and all this stuff, and so... Whenever we go over, we'd make sure to pack up our Legos, and it was all just a game of, uh... Trading minifigures, and... Trying to... Trade up, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's a thing I'm a little nostalgic for, if I'm being completely honest. I can remember pretty vividly their house and um 
Something about that house was really interesting. It always had this weird smell when you came into it, like kind of a dusty smell, almost like a library. And I know that might sound gross to some people, but to me, that's it's a very warm smell. It's very comforting. I like being in a library. And actually, their house was literally a block away from the library, so a lot of the time we would just go down there and grab some books and come back and read for a while and hang out, and it was a good afternoon. But um, this house was probably built in like the 60s or 70s, had this carpet, it was like a deep blue, not quite shag, it was thick carpet, but thick in the way where it was like dense, almost spongy. But I mean, make no mistake, you dropped a Lego piece on there, you would probably never see it again. I wonder whoever bought it after they moved out, if they ever found any of those Lego pieces. I, I just remember spending a lot of holidays there, particularly Halloween. I remember going around and they'd have it all dressed up in these decorations that were... I don't know, from the 90s and the 70s, probably earlier even, just all these cool things about, they always had dry ice coming out of the little pot and stuff. We'd go over there and play Nancy Drew video games and freak ourselves out. But I, I guess that's kind of off topic. The point is, um, at some point, I had found Lego Stop Motions. And Lego Stop Motions had introduced me to this weird magic. Because I'd seen Gumby, I'd seen Rankin Bass's Rudolph, and a couple of other stop motion things. But it didn't really click to me until I saw Lego Stop Motions that, like, oh, people could just do this with the toys they had, you know? And I think that kind of kicked off this weird little experimental phase where... I was trying to make all these Lego films using just uh, what I had, which I guess at the time was a little v VCR camera, you know, uh, like the little mini cassettes. And um, eventually we got a digital camera and I was able to take photos with that, and try to kind of mimic what I saw. I didn't think about, like, just using the internet to look up how to make stop motion. It was like, my dad told me that they did it by taking one photo at a time and moving a thing in between, and that was all I really needed. We kind of figured out movies that way, you know? And I mean, it wasn't just me, it was me and my siblings, uh, my sister, my brother, even my cousin's friends sometimes. We would all voice and act in these little Lego things, and, uh... I have a feeling a lot of them are gone now, which kind of makes me sad. Because those were the things that kind of got me into making videos in the first place, you know? God, I wish I could find them. Um, one of my favorite brick films that we used to watch was one called The Magic Portal. And it's one that, to this day, I'm still upset that they've never given us an HD version of it, you know? I wish someone would rescan that film for digital, because, God, is it so good. It's just the perfect mix of ingenuity and resolve, especially considering it was made in the late 80s. Like... You didn't have digital back then. Everything was done on film. And you read the story about this guy who made it and got it to the Australian Film Board and they were funding it and it took him years to create. And it's just insane. And the final product is this beautiful, little funny, charming animation. This little Lego guy is going on a little interdimensional adventure. It's, um... It's kind of just pulls at my heartstrings in the right way, I suppose. It's not even a way I can really describe. It's, um... It's warm. It's like a warm feeling. I, I, I don't understand when people say that they're afraid of stop motion, I guess. It, I, can, I guess it could look uncanny, but I don't understand how that feeling of uncanniness can overpower the sheer 
charm and effort that went into making these little clay and brick characters move, you know? And I, I guess that's why I wanted to paint this guy in gouache. Because, uh, I don't know, just felt like reminiscing. Lego's just one of those things that's filled with so much potential. But it feels like I've done so little with it. You know? I guess that's the danger of nostalgia. Sometimes you uh, get bogged down and feeling like things aren't as good as they used to be. Like there's no point of going on. I think that's the danger of it. That's where you get trapped. But at the same time, because of nostalgia, you know. I got a little bit of extra gouache practice in. I gotta make a pretty good little painting out of it, I think. I don't know if I have much else to say. I don't know if I have much else to show right now. I just felt like coming back and saying hi to everyone. I think we're at episode 48 now. Got two more until the 50th, and truth be told, at the time of recording this, I'm not even sure what to do for that. I want it to be grand and crazy. I'd love to do another hour-long episode like I did with uh, the last one. But who knows? Who knows what the future holds? Hopefully I don't disappear for another year again. We also talked about a deeper bond with the product. Nostalgia. Everybody take care. I don't want this to be such a somber note, you know? Uh, so everybody take care. And uh, I'll see you around soon. Um, until next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye. See ya. Space Cowboy. And so they went, and they beat the crap out of Joker!